On this episode, we're talking with one of the best educators in the real estate space on social media. He is absolutely dominating and having consumers flock to him in droves as a result. His name is Arjun Dingra. He's a two-time Taekwondo world champion, for God's sakes, and now he's kicking ass in the real estate world. So he's going to be breaking down how he became such a great educator and how that conscious decision uh, has led him to the great videos he's doing today. And he's going to break down the process and the formula he follows so you guys can follow in his footsteps. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Massive Agent Podcast. This is episode 259. I should check my notes. Episode 259 of the Massive Agent Podcast. One hell of an episode today. I could talk to this guy for three or four or five hours. We could do a full-on Joe Rogan-style episode and go for four hours. But we're not. We're, we're packing it all into just an hour. And uh, damn, this is a good one. So you guys know our guest's younger brother, Neil Dingra. We are talking today with Neil's older brother, Arjun. Arjun Dingra is in the San Francisco area, and he is one of the better content creators on social media in the real estate world, without a doubt. There's some, at the end of the episode, I asked him, I was like, so what do you, what's in your water? Like your family, you guys just crush social media content and video. Arjun, Neil, their sister Shivani, they're incredible content creators and they're, they're doing a shitload of business as a result. And they, but they all have their own separate approaches. They're all doing it in different ways, different styles. And that's cool. So Arjun's going to be breaking down his style. When you watch some of his videos and then specifically watch into his stories, you realize he has made a conscious effort to educate. And so to take a concept and break it down and be that lighthouse, to, to be that voice of reason and all this craziness, to decipher and, you know, uh, encrypt what the hell? No, not encrypt. The opposite of that. Encrypt? Encrypt is when you make, when you... Decrypt, when you, to decipher, interpret, that's the word I'm looking for. He's made it, made it an obvious choice to interpret what the headlines mean to consumers. And so he has a ton of them following him and reaching out to him and hiring him. And he has a very healthy mortgage business as a result. He's going to be breaking down his process for you so that you can be doing the same thing because educating consumers is what we're needed to do. Like social media, it, look, you can entertain and educate at the same damn time. You have to be an entertainer. To a certain extent, you have to entertain on social, but that doesn't necessarily mean funny, haha, ha, be a freaking clown. You can do that. You can be a, a clown, but you can entertain through educating and our June has that nailed and uh, just really excited to talk to him today. Fun fact about our June aside from um, just being such an incredible mortgage loan officer and uh, let's see, what's his title again? He's, he's not just a individual LO, like he's part of sales and biz dev at all Western mortgage AWM. So he's, he's working at the corporate level for his company as well. Here's what's really cool. He's the co-head coach of Team USA for uh, Taekwondo. Ta isn't like amazing. He literally kicks people's asses. He was the two-time world champion, two-time world Taekwondo champion, co-head coach of Team USA. Incredible. And when I the first time I met him in person, actually, because we've known each other through social media for a bit, but the first time it was earlier this summer at his brother Neil's forward event in Vegas. Uh, maybe it was the mastermind. I, either way, it was in Vegas. We're sitting down. He's like, hey, man, uh, I got a jet to Amsterdam coaching Team USA in the Worlds. And I'm like, oh, shit. So Team USA just had a hell of a hell of a showing, thanks in part to Arjun's coaching. So this guy just does so much, and he's such a great, nice guy. So you, you're really going to love this episode. I'm going to take just a sec to uh, break something down that I think is so important, okay? Uh, you guys that listen to this podcast and you do it for a long time, some of you, it's very obvious that you're, you're, you're listening to learn and then do, and others that just learn to be entertained or whatever, you know, uh, maybe you think it's funny that I say fuck every once in a while. I don't know. I don't know, but it's obvious who the doers are. And it's also obvious who those who aren't doing are. And I've noticed this in my coaching group in the massive agent society. 
the most successful agents, those that get the fastest results, the quickest results, the biggest results, they are, they're the most committed. Okay? And not just committed to like showing up, which is part of it. Like it's actually a huge part. Just showing up every single week to our calls is a huge indicator of success. But that dedication also shows that you're probably willing to do as well. So showing up and then doing and implementing is, is absolutely huge. We see people come and go all the time from the coaching group that they're like, hey, I'll, I'll give it 30 days. Like, I'm gonna try this thing out to see if it works. Usually those people don't stick it out and guess what, it doesn't work for. And it's because of their mental commitment. It's because of the decision that they've made already that they're going to try it. They're just gonna try it out. What they're doing when you try something like that out, when you're gonna listen to this podcast to hope that this podcast grows your business, you're giving way too much power to someone else. You have the power to grow your business. You have the power to implement what you're learning, put it into action and getting the results. I can't make, like, I can't do that for you. Even in our coaching group, I can't have success or I can't make success happen for the members. They have to make it happen. So the commitment Commitment is huge. Showing up, huge. Commitment, absolutely huge, of course. But um, I've seen this through hundreds and hundreds of agents. I challenge you right now going into 2023, whatever your goals are, whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to build, you have to commit. You have to commit not just with your thoughts, but with your actions. Show up. If you're going to hire a coach, if you're going to take a course, you better plug in and watch all those videos for the course. You better show up to that coach's calls. You better be messaging that coach when you're frustrated. You better be asking questions when the coach says something that you don't quite understand or that you're like, well, wait a minute. What about this missing piece? I'm my, my mind is blown how many times agents will just sit on the fact that they're like, okay, that makes 80% sense, but the 20% I don't get, so I'm just not going to do anything. And then they tell you about it four months later. What the fuck is that? I hope that you are the type of agent, the type of person who's aggressive, assertive, and committed enough to, like, if, if you're going to hire a coach or be part of a course or something, or even just with your team, whatever it is, like, don't sit there waiting for the answer to come to you. Go get the answer. Go to the person who has the answer and ask a question. Say, hey, thanks for this, but it doesn't make sense. How does this work? I don't quite get this part until it clicks. Those that are willing to do that are the ones who will succeed. Simple as that. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't really know what else to say. I, I want so bad for you guys to succeed. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, okay, for the next two weeks, for the... I'm, I'm pulling this out of my ass in midair, so hopefully we can make this happen. No, we will make this happen by the time the episode comes out. I'm going to do my part to help you commit to success in 2023, okay? What I can do for you, I'm thinking through this live on air. This is uh, this is fantastic. This is, uh, this is a great podcast right here. Here's what I'm going to do with our coaching group. First off, the society, it's, you guys want more of this but you want me and you want access to me and you want to be able to, to uh, leverage the power of all of those like-minded agents all around the country who are trying to build and grow. And they're having the same problems that you are. Some of them have already figured it out. And you, then you can sit next to them and be like, hey, how'd you figure that, that problem out? I'm having that problem right now. And then they just tell you and boom, that problem solved that you would have waited six months to figure out. You can just ask. Our group is so damn powerful. So if this podcast resonates with you and you are committed to success in 2023, I'm going to do my part to help you commit. Okay. Part of, part of it is just not having a monthly payment. That's you're like, Oh shit, that monthly payment's coming up. So with the massive agent society, we have an annual membership. Okay. So for 12 months, you can join. I'm going to take a thousand dollars off. All right. I'm, I'm going to do a thousand dollars off. We're going to do promo code Santa 22. Cause I'm feeling very, Santa like right now at the moment. So Santa 2022 for anyone who's willing to say, you know what? I'm in for a year, not for 30 days, not for a couple months. I'm in for a fucking year. I'm going to do this. I don't want to have to worry about the, the next payment coming out that fucks with my mindset and, and puts undue pressure on me for the next payment. 
no, commit to it. I'm going to give you a thousand bucks off. And all you got to do is go to massiveagentsociety.com, put in promo code Santa22 and join. And then you're in. You show me you're in. I just showed you I'm in. I'm going to give you a thousand dollars off. That's a big chunk. That's a big, uh, big discount. I might rethink this, but there we are. It's Christmas time. So there you go. Let's see how many of you guys are serious enough to take advantage. And when you show up in our coaching calls, when you show up in the society ready to learn, I promise I will deliver 10 times more than you expect. And I'm going to do it every single freaking week. And you're going to be able to access me, reach me, ask those follow-up questions, mastermind with all the others. This Massive Agent Society is the cheat code that you're looking for going into the next year. MassiveAgentSociety.com. Santa22 is the promo code. Go get it. Let's get into the episode with our June Dingra. Damn, this is a good one. Let's jump into it. What's up, guys? I'm here with our June Dingra. Welcome to the Massive Agent Podcast, my friend. How's it going? Good to be with you, brother. Everything's good. How about you, man? Very good. This time of year is crazy. Christmas and uh, Thanksgiving and, you know, all the stuff, all the, you know, family stuff. It's, it's fun yeah. though, man. Like I don't, I'm reminded every year just how blessed I am and how blessed we are. And I don't know. I, I just, I feel so sentimental this time of year. It's weird. It's good, man. That know. means you're, you're a lot more mindful in your old age. That's a good thing. Yes. yes. Getting there. I'll be 40 this <laughs> summer. My 40, not as old as me. So I shouldn't call you the old guy, <laughs> but yeah, well, good, man. You look good. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I remember real quick detour. I remember when my mom turned 40 and my dad threw this like over the hill party with all this black shit and he got her a walker with the tennis balls on it and all this stuff. And so as a kid, I'm like 40s old, like, oh shit. And now I'm like, I'm like, when do I grow up? <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. So yeah. Right. Well, you've certainly grown up through through Instagram and social media and your brand has exploded and, and it's super cool to see. So anyone who doesn't know Arjun or follow him yet, they will, but you are Neil Dingra's older brother. I am. Yeah. Yeah. And Shivani's older brother as well. Yeah. It was me, Neil, then Shivani. That's the order. The, the, it's the Dingra dynasty, man. I love it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. You, you guys, it, it's super cool that you've all, you're all blazing your own path and you're all in the same industry but you're doing things your way. Um, and th that's what we're going to talk about today. Like I, I really respect you. I've, I've been connected with you and, and been watching your stuff since uh, before we even met last summer at Neil's forward event in Vegas. Yep. And <clears throat> it's just been really cool to see you. You've mastered educating consumers and you do it in a few different ways, but for, I don't just want to skip to the end of the story because then we lose a lot of the, the context and the, uh, you know, like how you got here that is really important for those who are a few steps behind. So, you know, how long have you been in the mortgage game? And then when, like, how are you getting your clients and when did you start to use social to that end? Yeah, so I got in the mortgage game 21 years ago um, and brought Neil in with me. I was a you know, I was getting ready to graduate college, living in a frat house, and I was helping some fraternity brothers that were mortgage brokers in Las Vegas. They needed help up in Reno with picking up paperwork because everything was, there was no digital uh, facet to this business. Everything was handwritten and entered in. So I needed to go pick up paperwork and fill out loan applications at people's homes, and they paid me per house. I'm like, this is fantastic. This is great money. It was just a couple hundred dollars per house, but in college, that makes you a one percenter. In That's terms huge. Of being an income earner, so it's huge. So then, said, "How do we do what you guys are doing?" And my Neil and another partner and I, the three of us, all just opened an office, and then the rest was kind of history. In terms of content, uh, it was about five years ago that I recognized, and it actually came after a moment when I contemplated quitting the business. So, like mm. a lot of lenders, you know, you get shit on at times. And I was going through this bad Most storm, times. right? Like, yeah, these realtors, right? Like, I don't know if they teach you in realtor these, school. These fucking agents, at, Like, there's a whole day. Like, we're going to teach you how to argue and fight and beat down lenders. <laughs> like, that's the yes, day. it's two days. Right? Yeah. What? <laughs> it's two days, yeah. It's, oh, it's a two-day thing. All right, cool. It's very so, important. Yeah. That's, well, apparently, yeah. It kind of it took me a while to figure that out that that's what they're teaching you guys. But um, I, I had this really bad day where I got stood up by an agent. For a coffee meeting and the guy like was just he was a new agent he was an ex-title rep had turned into an agent and then he just dismissed me like the way you'd cancel an uber driver 
like mm. was that dismissive. And then I had two clients yell at me, another agent yell at me. And I just, I called my business coach and asked him, I'm like, hey, Kai, like, I don't know if the universe is telling me, man, like I need to just do something else, you know, like, you know, apply my talents elsewhere or just find a whole new career. And he says, look, man, I know you're good at what you do. The clients you've worked with, because at that point it, I've been in the industry like 15, 16 years. So it's not like I was a rookie. Mm. And I have a book, of, had a book of business and a lot of exposure and some wins on my resume of people I've helped. So he said, those people know you're good. I know you're good, but who else does? He said, if we Google you, what are we going to find? I said, probably just my martial arts background, right? Like the, my association with Team USA and my competing stuff. Yeah. He's like, yeah, that's a problem, man. You got to do something to change it. He wasn't even telling me to get into social because he himself didn't have that answer at the time. He says, you need to figure out a way to change that. So I was like, okay, let me mull on this a bit before I decide to quit and throw in, you know, throw my towel in. And then Neil and I went to a Gary Vee conference right after my wedding. This would have been January of 2018. And that's when I started this pod. That's crazy. Yeah you know, energetically connected, right? In that time, right? Yeah. So we went to it and then the light just kind of went off and then we both really dove into it. Neil went off in a totally different direction and he's in another stratosphere now with his content game and his marketing <laughs> coaching and just his knowledge of it, which is amazing to everyone. And it's also created such community, right? It's how you and I have met. And then I have gone more of the educational route and being really an informant, but it changed everything for me, you know, doing that. It basically helped revive me in the business it helped me start to create a relevant like stake in the ground that like I belong here. I'm good at what I do. And you're, you're all going to know about me. You may not work with me, but you're all going to know who I am. And that's been the only goal with it. That's incredible. Uh, I mean, geez, so many directions to take this in. The, the, the first nugget that you just dropped that I think is huge for anyone who's a step or two or three behind where you're at. There's no one right way. Right. Right. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no one way that you must do things uh, or, you, or you fail. Like, that's not how it works. You need to find your path. So you mm -hmm. did. <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, um, man. So you start doing this, this content on social. Walk us through, like, how you started to figure it out. Like, when did it start to click? Because you went, you decided consciously that you're going to educate and teach. And anyone who's ever watched any of your videos or your stories on Instagram, like you are so freaking good at that. Like that was a conscious decision from the get go. It, not from the get go. No, you know, okay. we were talking a little bit offline here. Like initially you get in and I think all of us make, we're all guilty of this. And I, if I can save anybody that's listening to this some time, you know, it would have, if someone would have told me this, it would have saved me 18 months of content creation, but it was a necessary lesson. So there's no wasted time here, but I definitely want to help you guys out and shortcut this. So I was creating content and scripting content and crafting it and recording it and posting it all based on what I wanted to talk about, what I thought was important, what I felt that I thought people wanted to hear about because it was in my best interest. And, you know, selfishly speaking, it was stuff that I felt like I sounded good at talking about, right? And I think that's a natural direction for all of us to go in because we want to go to we want to go or yield to the side that we're good at, right? Your forehand's better. You're going to swing with it. You don't want to expose that backhand if it's not so good. So this was the route I went. But I found over time, even though I didn't have any expectations early on, I found over time like maybe six, eight, ten, and then after 12 months being into it, it's not really connecting with people. But I saw other people connecting with clients and audience members like almost right away. But mine wasn't connecting. It wasn't sticking. It wasn't getting traction. There was no viral moment. There was no longevity with it. So I basically came to the conclusion after a little bit of my own personal coming to Jesus about it is that I'm talking about stuff that only I want to talk about, but it may not be in the best interest or what anyone else on the other side of that device or computer screen actually wants to listen to. So I started paying attention. And then that really simple analogy applied, you know, that you and I joked about, man, like, if people are asking for hamburgers, do not serve them burritos, right? They're telling me what they want to hear about. So, and I think for all content creators, anyone, doesn't matter what stage you're at, just be hyper conscious of this. Actually put on the ears and the hats and the eyeballs of the end user, the person that you hope will actually engage with this content. What are they looking for? What do they want to hear about? What are they afraid of? What are they confused by? What are they, where are they being misled? 
And you'll find that there's endless amounts of content ideas just based on that. Because again, they're raising their hands saying, I have a question about this. And if you don't answer that or you don't address it, which is very easy for us to do now, you just look at analytics and just do research. If you're not doing that, then your, your content strategy is going to be flawed from the get-go. So you can save a lot of time and gain traction faster and just, be, just have more of a meaningful journey with this stuff where it's actually helping and doing something and having impact if you take that approach. Brilliant. And I'm so glad that you elaborated on that. I, I figured that out the hard way by figuring out what doesn't work. Yeah. And, and it, it, it's the cheat code. Like it's such a, it's such a hack. It's, it's a, it's not anything you have to work 20 hours to do. It's like, it's something that once you're aware of and you can, you can ask yourself before you post uh, a very important question, like it changes everything. So I was oh. meeting with a group of real estate investors yesterday and you know, I, I asked them who's using social to try to get business. They all raised their hand and I'm like, how many of you are getting traction? A few raised their hand and I'm like, I'm like, let me ask you this. Are you posting stuff that you want people to see or are you posting stuff that they want to see? Right. And you could just see the look on their face. Right. A lot of them had that moment that you're describing. They're like, oh shit, that changes everything. So you had that epiphany. You yep. figured out, oh my God, like I need, these people are asking for burgers. I should probably serve them burgers. Like, yeah. let me, let me do that. Right. What did that process look like? Like how long ago was that? Like how soon did you start to see some results as far as uh, getting hired or getting, getting leads coming in? Right. What did that look like? That's, that's when it actually, it, it was that moment when I noticed that this is the right way because after 18 months of doing this and not really gaining a lot of traction, growing my audience, gaining a following and you know, there's a lot of things that we can all fall prey to, like, you know, there's shortcuts that you can try and take, you know, to try and grow your audience or to gain more exposure, but it still wasn't going to help. It still wasn't going to answer the, you know, answer this conundrum that I was faced with, right? That I felt like really stuck now, like I've been doing this, but it's just not connecting. I'm not generating really any business from it because the ROI question kicks in later. Like those of you that are doing this, forget about the ROI question. Just put it off the table, remove it from your mind, take it off the table. Just say, I'm going to commit to posting good, relevant, informative content that is in the interest of the end user. Remember, I'm gonna do this for 12 months with zero expectations. And if I do that, I'll see where things land. Then I'll start worrying about an ROI. So I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna focus on that at all because I think that's the prey. And you deal with agents all the time, Dustin. Like you're an educator and, a, and an influencer in this space. Like how many agents come back to you and they're like, ah, you know, I've been posting for a month. It's not really working. I don't think this is for me or I don't think the content game's for me, right? Like, and you're like, you haven't even scratched Way anything. too many. Yeah. So yeah. most people are just looking for that instant gratification. But when I slowly started to think about what are current trends, because I'm a big news, like whether it's political or economical junkie. So I started saying, okay, this is what people are being fed. How can I maybe clarify that? Or how can I put my own take on it? How can I give my opinion on it? And then tie it back to housing, tie it back to mortgage, tie it back to personal finance. I started doing that a little bit. And then I noticed... When I would share something, whether it's through a story or a post, it would connect. The engagement was 10x from what it was. And granted, I was starting at a very low place, so it didn't take much to actually hit that 10x mark. And then the light went off. And I just said, okay, I'm on to something here. You know, this is apparently what people want to hear about. And then I started looking back and like, Jesus, I spent all that time the last year posting all this stuff when really no one wanted to hear about. It. So it's not that it was bad or that I wasn't good enough. Or that my delivery was poor, which you know can always be worked on. We're all evolving in this and finding new voice and footing. And don't ever feel like you're done with that work. That work never ends. But once I did that and saw that it was connecting and actually having impact, switch went off and then that was the game changer. And now you don't run out of ideas when you have that, when you have that approach to this. You'll never run out of ideas of coming up with content. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I just have a, a running list on the notes on my iPhone. Every time yep. I'm like, oh, this would be a good video. I just totally. add it to the list. Yep. Yeah. That's it, where you it, come up with all those funny ones you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some of them I pull out of my ass at that moment. Others where I'm like, okay, what do I do a video on? I just refer to the list. There but, you go. Uh, Everyone should do that. Great absolutely. Advice. Absolutely. I mean, I ideas come to me like crazy, but I still have those moments where I'm like, I have no idea what I'm going to do a video on today. What am I going to post today? That happens to everybody. That's why you got to have the, 
uh, the list, the database, right? So yeah. when you're when you're in one of those lows and you're not feeling hot, you go to the list and you always you're like totally. You can't use I don't know what to post today as an excuse. It's not no, a valid the list, one. The list will always bail you out every time. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So, dude, I think it'd be important to not just focus on what you're doing now that's working so well, but what you were doing wrong before. You know, because yeah. most people in our industry, most most lenders, most agents, most anyone, well, any entrepreneur is in that camp where they are putting stuff out that they want people to see. And they're not considering whether or not the audience actually wants it. So what can you give some examples of some of those videos, some of the, the content you were doing before that wasn't really for the audience? Yeah, I would, I would really try and be too personal. And I mean personal on a business mm -hmm. level. I would try and draw these contrasts of why I'm different from the other lender you may talk to or why I'm different from a bank. And these are more just kind of drawing land, lines in the sand and just framing a character, so to speak, which the character was me. Like, okay, so you can know about me. But again, I was like, I don't give a shit. I don't really care, right? It wasn't speaking to what they were, again, what they're afraid of, what they're confused by, where they're being misled, what they're interested in. Right? They're not interested in that. I was trying to force that upon them and say, hey, look at me. Let me explain to you what it is I do or why I'm different. So that was definitely not working. Um, and then I think also just kind of misusing the platforms, really. Because we've got to, everyone has to think of themselves as a media company, comma, whatever you are, right? Like yes. Dustin's clients are media companies first, real estate agents second. And when you start looking at it that way and then think, I'm a media company, I've got all these channels. I've got LinkedIn, which feeds you know, a different channel. I've got YouTube, I've got TikTok, I've got Instagram, I've got Facebook. And there's other ones too that are out there too, but those are kind of the, main, the mainstream ones and the ones that I engage on. And now I can start being really intentional about where I'm putting this content and who those end users are and getting really, really specific about it. But I was misusing them. I would just kind of do a one size fits all. Like, whatever I was gonna post on Instagram, and I was very focused on Instagram only, actually up until about a year ago. It was still my main focus. I kind of, I didn't ignore the other platforms, I was just neglecting them and not giving. So if 90% was being focused here, 10% was being spread out amongst the other ones. Whereas now we've recalibrated that and are very intentional about, okay, this type of message, this form of content, great for TikTok and Instagram. Something like this, definitely LinkedIn. Something like this, it can go across the board it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's universal. So just getting really, really specific has helped. Whereas I wasn't doing that before and either misusing or not even correctly using or using at all the other various platforms. But those would have been the two biggest missteps I feel. That, that's such a great point. This is, it's something that I'm like, I'm starting to wrap my head around this in a more clear way. And, and I'm, that must be why I'm getting so many questions recently. Like, okay, Instagram has like Instagram is not just Instagram. There are different things that work within different parts of Instagram, right? Like there's the Instagram feed, which you do your reels on and your videos right. and your, your photos. Uh, then there's stories. And, you know, I think what you're alluding to is you figured out certain things should go in your stories that right. do not work and should not go in your feed. Right. Will you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, it's really simple, right? Like, and people will, and you still see a lot of people make this big misstep. Um, some of it's cringeworthy because like, no, you shouldn't have that in your feed or you shouldn't have shared that in your stories. The rule of thumb that I always use is if this piece of content, right, whatever it is I want to talk about, if this piece of content is going to be relevant a week from now, put it in your feed because that's what people can come back to. If it's only a moment in time, if it's a fleeting moment or it's something super personal, like I'm out with my family, I'm with my daughter at Disneyland, I'm not going to post something about being with my daughter at Disneyland in my feed. That's gonna be shared in my stories because that's a fleeting moment because you have stuff going on in your life and so do I and I'm just sharing that with you and then we move on, right? Like it's a very short attention span that people have. So I think you can make that distinction. That's a really simple, almost layman's way of approaching it, but it's definitely the nuance and the dance that you must figure out. Like what should go where? What type of content should go where? And if you don't know, then you know, hook up with coaches and. Guys like Dustin, that you know, will, will help guide you through that because it's really, really important. Because if you misstep this, the content could be great, but if it's being misapplied or not using the right megaphone or loudspeaker or communication device, so to speak, it's not going to connect properly. 
and Absolutely. you'll find yourself very frustrated. But it's it's something people have to learn and understand. It's not complicated. Just have to apply yourself a little bit here and then just recognize, okay, this form of content, what would it be best on? Or what, you know, what aspect of the platform would it be best on? Is it even right for the platform in the first place? Like, just think a little bit more, right? Apply yourself a little bit more. Yeah. I know that that part overwhelms a lot of people, especially if they're getting started. And this is why we have, you hear people that are like, hey, I've done videos for two weeks and they're not working. This social <laughs> thing doesn't work for me. It's laughable. Right? Yeah. It, it is. <laughs> Earlier you mentioned a month and I was like, shit. If they make it a month, like they're doing better than most. Because <laughs> most are like, I've done three videos and I, you know, I did the talking head videos that, that Neil does and that Arjun does and didn't work for me. I was like, well, you fucking introduced yourself in the beginning of the video, you know? Right. Um, there's a lot to it. Yes. But it's simple. It's simple, but there's a lot of nuance. Yes. And thank God someone can listen to you describe your journey of figuring it out because it took you years to get to what we see in your feed today. Right. You don't, yeah, people just think that that happens instantly. I mean, there was a lot of, a lot of missteps, a lot of money spent, a lot of wasted videos, a lot of wasted time. Oh, I shouldn't say wasted time. I hate that expression. I apologize. Not wasted time, but just not well, not well spent time that could have right. been done differently. You were but practicing. They were, they were necessary lessons, right? You're going through yeah. it, right? You either have wins or you have lessons. There's no losses or wasted time, right? Like you either win, which simply rewards you for getting it right, but you don't learn anything from a win whether it's athletically, professionally, or whatever. You win from the setback, or you learn from the setback. That's what's, there's the teaching moment in that. So I had plenty of those in those first 18 months, and I still will have them, because I try new things, and not everything you try is going to work, but you have to constantly evolve with this stuff. It's a very, very fluid space. And the big mistake, or the big misassumption that people make is that, that this is just some box you can check, or you can outsource, or you can outsource your voice. So let me just hire a company to do it. Sure, you can do that, and sure, there's some brand, some companies or, or agents, lenders, or you know, shops, branches that that do this, and maybe it helps keep up your presence. But will it really, truly work? Will it really, truly be a pillar of your business? No, it never will be, unless it's you, because you can't outsource you. So it takes time, it takes commitment. You have to really apply yourself, and don't just think of it as this ancillary thing. If, you, if you're stuck or rigid in the, well, I've got my four or five things that have always worked for me. So this social media thing is just an extra thing. Maybe I'll dabble in it a little bit or I won't do it at all because I just have the audacity to say that, which I shared a story on that, Dustin, recently that audacity and arrogance will get you killed in this industry. And if you don't believe me, just wait 18 more months and see what happens to you. Yep. But if you actually take it and say, here's all this social stuff. It's a journey. I need to learn. I can hire great coaches and great companies to help me. So you're not alone in this. There's amazing advisors out there in this space, right? People that are really good at what they do. And what I need to do is take it to enhance all those things that I said are my ways and old methods. I can, adv I can, I can take door knocking and put it on steroids by digitally door knocking if I'm an agent. If you're like, well, I have my methods of farming out and mailing postcards. Screw that. Do an email campaign that's, you know, a little bit more sophisticated, do a social campaign, start doing things that are targeted. Just DM people. You could DM 100 people. If I'm a lender or a realtor, to, to get in contact with 100 people would take me months if I wanted to physically do it because it's the old way or it's tried and true or it's tested. I'm not saying ignore it. Just do it a different way. So use social to enhance the things that you normally do and then you'll find that social isn't this extra thing. It's actually an enhancer of those things. And then maybe you won't be so resistant to it. So hopefully that, that moves the needle for some people that are thinking about it as this extra thing. It's not an extra thing. It's a thing you just need to implement and it'll make all your other things easier, more efficient, better. Absolutely brilliant. So I wish that I understood this early in my career. Yeah. Now, I've been an agent for 11 years. The first few I was door knocking and cold calling, mostly door knocking. And every single time I would call someone, or show up at their doorstep, I was a stranger. They would open the door and there was a stranger standing there. 100% no of the time. Yep. Right? So how cool and powerful would it have been if I show up at someone's doorstep, they open the door and they're like, oh shit, it's you. Because they've yeah. seen your videos. They've seen your face. They've, they've seen changer. your stuff in their newsfeed. Right? Yeah. Game Instant changer. credibility. Yeah. So That's what this uh, creates. Yes. So yeah, that's beautiful. If you're, if you're a door knocker, continue, but enhance the shit out of it. Put it on steroids by showing up in their news feed 30 times before you show up at their doorstep. And then they're like, oh my God, it's you. 
Yeah. You start from a totally different stratosphere, like just yes. a totally different plane, right? When you do anything in the old ways, and you know, whether they say it's cold contacting, cold calling, I mean, that's really true. You can't overstate that enough. It's very cold. Like you're starting below ground zero, which means you've got so much work just to even gain zero credibility. And then from there, build up. But you can shortcut all of that by simply just having these touch points, right? And just get, like you said, perfectly get into their feed, get in, get into their heads other ways because you have these devices and everyone is stuck to them. So get into their device. It's really that simple. It's the most valuable real estate on the planet is somebody's, somebody's screen. Yep. It is those brain cells, man. You got to buy them. Absolutely. Uh, dude, I love it. I'm glad you went there. Uh, and I wish that I had, I wish someone had taught me this lesson me back too. in the day. You and me both, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but this is why if you're listening to podcasts to learn and grow, like you're getting cheat codes, you're you're getting like we're Arjun is literally taking months, if not years off of your journey and just shortening the, the learning curve dramatically. Like 100%. you're just condensing time because yep. you took the time to listen to this pod. Here you are with like, oh, shit, I'm already doing this. Let's make it work 10 times better. Speaking of which, making it work 10 times better, your videos are freaking amazing. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, man. That's very Absolutely. Funny. So the, when I first was like, oh my God, I need to get him on the podcast was not from your reels. Actually. Like I was like, okay, great. It was once I started to, I was watching your stories mm. and you took the time to dive into context and go into the nuance of a certain news story. It was something right. housing related, interest rate related. No, I think it was like more like, Hey, here's what's going to happen. Here's what interest rates are causing to happen. Here's what you can expect with supply and demand and all that. And you were just educating in such an incredible way in your story. And I'm like, I'm like, this, this guy's one of the greatest educators in the industry. You're not just an entertainer. You're like, you back it up. So I'm like, got to get you on the pod. But it would be, I would be remiss and I would be an idiot and an asshole if, if we didn't <laughs> talk about the amazing videos that you do, the reels. So what can you describe your formula when you're like, okay, it's time to do some, some videos to put out on, on reels and TikTok and YouTube shorts. How do you come up with those? What's the blueprint? So it's applying a little bit of everything that we've talked about. It's always keeping that running list. Like you said, everyone should do that, right? Because you have these moments in the shower or like when you're driving, like, Oh, that would be a great piece of content. Or I saw somebody else do it. Right. Caught like, the best form of flattery is what copying somebody right to them. It's great flattery to them. So if you see someone do something and you want to put a different spin on it, take it, you know, take it and do your own spin on it. So keeping that ideas sheet constantly going is really key. And then how I, uh, uh, and then also applying the current trends, like looking at what everyone's looking for. So if I take my, I'm constantly adding ideas, but I'm always looking at what other people want to hear about or what other people are concerned about. And then that will give me the topic for the reels. Now, I use the same formula, which is taught by, you know, I, you know, my coach is the same as many other coaches, right? It's my brother, Neil. He broke down that formula of having a very good hook, addressing the issue, and then providing some sort of solution in a very, very easy to understand context, and then leaving it that, at that. Because another trap was, and this is why reels that are shorter do better, right? If people's attention spans are smaller. You don't need to over explain things. Just keep it light, you know, plant a seed, leave the door open for the opportunity to have a discussion later or a DM exchange. If you explain everything and you give it away and they're like, thank you for that. That was great. I don't need to talk to you anymore. We don't want that. We want to have conversations. Well, we want to create connection. So be brief, be to the point and, but still, Provide enough that you, you know, you left some crumbs there that are going to whet the appetite and open the door for a future conversation or an immediate one. But that's how I approach creating reels. It's nothing, you know, overly fancy. There's the running list that's always there. It's studying the trends, finding way to condense that into a very short message. And you talk about this a lot, man. And I, you know, I, you educate me even as well, because you give this advice to agents. And I feel like people that coach agents or speak to agents are great people for lenders to listen to two reasons. One, because the market and the game is very similar. But two, if you're teaching agents what to do and I'm trying to get in the heads of agents, then I want to listen to you too, right? Mm. Like that's, that's, just, that's just the way it should be applied. So doing that will help make your reels a lot more impactful. And for me, that was a big game changer. 
That's great, man. Uh, your your reels, I would, I would look to like the, there were four or five different accounts that when I was trying to figure out this blueprint that you're describing, I would watch your reels and I would just dissect them. I'm like, okay, he's he's sitting here. Um, oh, he's actually sitting at a desk and he's leaning into the desk. And oh, he started with this hook and it lasted about this long. And like I just dissected everything about it, and I know that that took you a lot of time, but. When you watch somebody who's uh, took you a lot of time to figure out, when you watch somebody who's doing it so well and you take the time to dissect how they do that, you're shortening time once again. Yes. Rather than beating your head against the wall for a year doing shitty videos and gradually improving, why not just literally copy how someone else does it but put your own spin on it? Like, I steal your topics. I steal Neil's topics. I steal... Uh, Trevor York's topics. Yeah. I steal a lot of people's topics, but so do they. Exactly. Right. It's just one. It's just one big incestual content pool, man. We're all just. <laughs> yes. take, we're all just taking from. But look, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like that's what you do. You just take your own spinner. And let me tell you, everyone else is doing it too. The people that yeah. you copied it from, they probably copied from someone else or took it as inspiration. So it's an open community that way. Nobody has proprietary rights to any topic or any form of content. It's a community. And you should use it to your advantage that way because a lot of your ideas are there. People also underestimate that avenue for doing research. Just scroll. Look at what people in your industry are talking about. Look at what your competition's doing. Look at what your target audience posts themselves and just see, and you'll come up with other ideas and connect the dots that way. A thousand percent. Yeah. Uh, I love when people copy my my videos. Like, it, First off, it's flattering. It's like, cool, Absolutely. you, you want to copy my... Like that makes me feel nice, yeah. but uh, I've started just like whenever I write a script for one of my reels, I just now put it within the massive agent society and I give it to our real estate team. And I was like, here's another script. Like have at it because their video is not going to be the same. They may say the same words, but they're not right. going to say them the same way and not yep. with the same inflection, the same tone, the same personality. And, and that's the beauty there. Like it's all original content. Even if you're copying somebody else's script or topic or hook, and it, it just doesn't need to be so hard, right? Yep, it doesn't. We just do that. We make it harder on ourselves. But yeah, it's a lot easier. And I think one mm -hmm. other tip I want to leave people with, because you touched on it earlier with stories. If you're thinking about, okay, well, I'd like to do that. Because this is something anybody can do, really. News is out there. Scroll through it. Screenshot the article clip. And then either record yourself doing a video and point to the article or to where it's like legible and re, you know that it's visible, or do you know the the green screen concept that a lot of people are doing now, which is really trending, and then you're like, okay, but I I still wouldn't know what to say. Address the headline, maybe clarify it or offer some points of like basically like basic anything that basically is going to help address the confusion that might be there or the fear, and then always do this. This will make it easy for you. How you button it up? If you ask yourself the question or you're trying to figure out. My next line needs to address what does this mean to you? What does this mean for me if I'm reading it? If you do that and you answer that question, that's how you can wrap up every single one of your stories where you're trying to be an informant or a news reporter or someone that is commenting on a news report. Just address that. What does this mean to you? So I'm saying, well, the Fed had their meeting yesterday. Here's what this means for homeowners right now. Here's what this means for future homeowners. Now I have your attention. You can throw hooks into... Simple conversation. You need to hold their attention, but generally applying and even directly saying it sometimes, here's what that means for you. Or I'm going to tell you right now what this is going to do. Okay, I'm listening because now you're connecting with me. That's very, very powerful. So for anyone doing stories and even your general content, you need to apply that. Rene Rodriguez calls it the tie down. I learned it from him a long so time good. ago because I attended his very first Amplify that he did in Minnesota when it wasn't even called Amplify. It was called Personal Influence and Persuasion. There was like eight of us there. I still have a photo of it, of us sitting in this room in this conference place in Minnesota and it was freezing. You know, it was, it was a huge snowstorm and we were out there and we did it, but those notes still apply. And that's where he taught me about the tie down and I've never lost it because the tie down is when you have to tie down a topic or tie down a point, and you know this too, Dustin, really well. It's what you're asking the question, what does this mean for you? Or what, why should this be important? And if you ask that question, you'll really start to tighten up and close the loop on every piece of content that you share. Because we can talk, and then you leave a point, and then you give a solution. But again, 
Well, what does that mean to me? What is that going to do for me? So answer that question too, and you'll find your content gets really complete. There's so much to unpack there. And it, it's not surprising that you are such a great communicator having gone through uh, Renee's training oh, that yeah. long ago. Um, yeah. If you guys don't know who we're talking about, see Renee speak on Instagram and TikTok. He's exploded since he started following Arjun and Neil's uh, blueprint for doing videos um, like he, he's getting millions of views on his on his TikToks. No, oh, like it's, it's he's yeah, he's gonna take over TikTok one of these days. Uh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. no one can stop him like he's a very intimidating guy like like he'll just say get out of my way, you know, Renee just Renee has like presence anyways, right? So this was not this was not, you know, difficult writing to read on the wall. It was there like Renee just needed to step into the mic because if anyone who's met Renee, he's this, you know, very big presence and stature of a man. And he's got this deep, penetrative, visceral voice, like it impacts you, right when you hear him, right. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it was just a matter of time before his content was going to start clicking and just like, really pierce through the uh, pierce through the rest of the, the crowd. A thousand percent. Yeah, he's, uh, it's, it's a great, he is a great example of, like, you could have all the pieces together and, and you're still not like there's something that just isn't clicking with your content and you make one slight pivot into the format, like the hook and, and all of that and maybe some transitions and boom, it just works. Like, totally. and then you just take off. Like he had, he spent decades practicing and then once he figured out this TikTok blueprint, boom, he, he exploded on social. He had already right. exploded within the industry and, you know, consultant for Fortune 500 companies and, and all of this, but, uh, it shows how close we all are to one, sl one slight adjustment changing our lives, right? It's crazy. Totally. It is crazy. crazy. Really crazy. Now, I spent too much time talking about Renee. Now, I forget what the hell you were talking about before that, which was all really, no, we, really good shit. We, it was just about the tie-down. That's because I learned about yes. the tie-down concept at Renee's event. So just again, at, you know, to button that topic up, uh, just ask that question. What does this mean to you? Or make sure you're answering that question. What does this mean for you? And you'll find that your story shares, your content, uh, even your conversations, you know, your sales calls will be a lot more impactful, right? Sometimes you get on a, yeah. hey, I'm gonna send you a market update and it's a bunch of jargon, but there's no addressing. Well, here's what this means for you. Here's how this is gonna impact you. Here's why this might be an opportunity for you. You didn't say any of that. You just gave me a bunch of shit that I could have Googled or just, I mean, it looks like a Wikipedia entry, right? Like it's just all facts and history and like, great. That's awesome. but. What does that mean to me? I'm still confused. So you are speaking my language here. It, it drives me out of my fucking mind when I see agents and lenders take a headline about the FHFA, which none of us know what the fuck that even is. Absolutely uh, not. No. The, the FHFA just raised conforming loan limits. And then you do a video where that's all you say. You're just like taking the headline and restating it. And consumers are like, that's great. What the fuck does that even mean? Right. What was a loan you're limit? Talking. Why is a loan limit important? And what the fuck yeah. is that acronym you just said? Like, yeah. like you're lost. You're absolutely yeah. lost. 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Like, dude, nine and a half out of 10 agents have no idea what FHFA is. I barely know what it is. And I've kind of forgot. Dustin, I've been FHA. in lending 21 years, man. I don't even know what the fuck it is, man. So <laughs> what does that tell you? Right. And then we're just regurgitating headlines. So when you're talking about these green screen videos that are working very, very well, and I haven't done nearly enough of them, but the ones I have done are working, the ones that our agents are doing are working very well. Yes. It's a chance to take the headline and give context to it, yes. decipher it, uh, you know, what does it mean? And, and it's, there's something about the format too, where, where there's an article behind you and you're talking in front of it. And we're talking about the green screen filter on Instagram reels. TikTok has the same thing. And, and you've all seen them. Gary V's doing a shitload of these. Yeah. Ryan Serhant's doing a shitload, yep. um, you know, which is kind of a clue. And yep. it's just so easy, right? Like rather so than, easy. rather than sitting down, you're like, okay, I'm going to come up with a completely original video and let me, let me craft the hook and all this stuff, you're just taking an article and you're like, here's a headline, here's why that's bullshit, or here's what it actually means, or here's what this means to you if you're buying yes. a house this year. Yes. Here's what this means to you if you wanna start getting uh, rental properties. Yep, that's exactly So it. the work's done for you, you just have to like decipher. Just comments, right, and you're doing yeah. it already. You're passing, you're passing your own thoughts and commentary and judgment on things all the time. 
even in the conversations that you're not so conscious in, like you're doing it with clients. If a client calls you and says, I don't think I want to sell, what do you get into right away? You're trying to address that, right? You're passing a commentary on why you think it's actually a great time to sell or whatever it might be. Like you're already doing this stuff. You just kind of freeze up sometimes when it comes to doing it in front of a camera or actually articulating it. But just take a breather, relax, and just remember, like I said, that, that end question that you have to address. What does this mean to you or what does this mean for you or how is this going to help you? And if you do that, it just makes it so much easier. And you relax and you find out, look, I already, I did know that. I had the answer. I had something to say on this. Like everybody is capable of doing it. But the green yes. screen concept, now that it's trending, and again, you said it perfectly, right? If these, if these huge influencers or people are doing it, that's a clue that I should probably be doing it too. What they do, they build credibility. They'll definitely build some community. But what they do is they establish you as this, like knowledge broker or this person that they want to hear from. And you'll find, even if it's just a few people, you'll have some raving fans of people like, I actually look forward to hearing what Dustin has to say on this topic or these topics. Right. You know, they're, they actually go looking for it. You know, th one of the biggest compliments I got, which wasn't even a compliment, it was after, it was not the previous meeting, but it was one from earlier this year. One of my clients, when I finally posted about it, like a day after the Fed meeting, he said, the moment the meeting was done, I went to your, I went to your stories to see if there was something there because I was really looking forward to hearing what you had to say on it, but I'm glad you did this a day later. So I told me like, okay, this guy's already expect, like people start to expect it from you after a while. So you'll build it, you'll raise a bar with it, and then you can continue living up to it, but you're going to build some real nice, engaged, and loyal community that view you as a thought leader and view you as an authority. And like, I really love how this guy always translates it for me. Like, He's, he's my cheat code to the news and the, like all the chaos I read. I look to him to keep me calm and help clarify and help explain to me what this actually really truly means. And if I should be worried about it or if I don't need to, uh, you know, I don't need to, I don't need to sweat it. So well put. So well put. Yeah, it, it establishes you as a thought leader, as a, a teacher, an advisor, someone with credibility right off the bat that they can turn to when there's some other scary headline or whatever, and they're like, what does this actually mean? Yeah. As you know, most headlines are total bullshit or just wildly misleading. And also 73% of stats given on podcasts are made up on the spot. So uh, that's important to know. It's very, right. very important. Which is why I didn't want to comment on what that acronym was, that whole FHFA thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> something with fair housing, something, finance. Something. something so yeah. before we get into the rapid fire questions and wrap this, wrap this thing up, I still remember this video you did recently it, within the last six months or so. It was one of the most hilarious hooks and also one of the best, most uh, fitting hooks I've ever heard. And then the video that you went on, uh, it, like how you explained it after was so great. It was, it was something about, and you'll have to refresh my memory, something about hey, if you want to have more sex, buy your own house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something along those lines. And it, it was like, that is the greatest hook ever because I had to keep listening to hear how you were going to explain why you have. Been, and, yeah, I, it was about how I recorded it in Vegas, actually. And it was at the mastermind you and I were both at. Uh, oh, yeah. The one Neil did. Yeah. The the actual in-person one. It wasn't the Ford one, but the Ford mastermind. Right. Yes. We were there and then I needed to also because I was there, but also really heavy into all the promotional content for the big Sirhan event because we were just like a month and a half or two months out. So yeah. we went up to my room and the idea just came to me. That was not one that was planned at all. The one that you're referencing, that came to me in the moment. And then I just thought, I don't know, like what could I do? Like some, I want to do something really, you know, provocative, shocking almost. I'm like, look, okay, you think about when you're happiest or most optimistic in your life. Okay, great. It's, when, it, when is that? It's when you're a little bit more secure maybe financially, right? Or you feel like you're on a roll or you made some good decisions. I'm like, how could I tell that? I'm like, boom. People have more sex if they feel financially secure. Like it just came to me in the head. And then that was the, I mean, it's an impactful hook, no doubt. And I appreciate you saying that. And I, you know, that's a very nice compliment to say that it was as good as you're saying it is. <laughs> but it was just a no brainer, right? And I knew it would get people's attention. Like, here's how I'm helping people. Here's how I'm helping homeowners have more sex. Okay, yes. you're listening, right? Unless you are asexual, <laughs> that message is not going to bounce off you, right? You might be like, I could care less, right? That's like, you know, a vegan getting something on the keto diet. Like, just, I'm scrolling by. 
Yeah. No, you're, I'm going to have your attention for a bit. And then I just tied it right back. And then I took people down that avenue, right? Like stats show and studies show that people who are more financially secure are not as stressed about money or having more activity at home. So here's how you can be one of those, right? If you made a good decision on buying a house a while ago, you're probably sitting pretty. And if you finally do decide to enter the market, you'll be making good financial decisions, which means you might be having more sex too in your future. So that's it. It was literally that. That was the script. We just made it up on the fly, but it worked. Incredible. So sometimes those impromptu moments, if you can put a good hook on them, they might have a really good punch to pack. Yeah, he, he grabs attention. So the hook is not the topic, right? Not necessarily, no. Sometimes yeah. it, it ends up being that way, but yeah. no, and it wasn't. And I disclosed that. I think I had like a little disclaimer. This is not going to be a tutorial. Because people yeah, are like, oh, yeah. I'm watching this. Like, what's he going to get into? They're going to be Which diagrams. is funny in and of itself. Like, yeah, it was awesome. right? It was, yeah. it was lighthearted, but it, ca it also kept their attention. Like, okay, it's not going to be a tutorial. You know, I can turn off the perv mindset. Like, this was going to be something <laughs> cool to watch. All right, what is he going to say? What is he going to yes. tell me, right? And it's still enough to hold your attention. So don't underestimate that, that ability to quickly draw attention. And just think about the things that you get suckered by. Like, if you need good hook ideas, think about what you stop and scroll on you stop your scroll on, right? If you're going through stuff and like, that got me to stop, or why did I stop? Ask yourself a question, like why did I actually like his content? Kind of reverse engineer it, and then you can craft your own hooks and topics that way too, because again, the inspiration's out there. Other people are doing it, you can just learn from it. Perfect, dude, we could talk for hours, and this is fun, and you're so good at what you do, so I love dissecting you know, how you approach, how you do what you do, um, but we gotta wrap it up. No, man, and I, go pick up my daughter. I, appreciate, I appreciate you, man. And I just want to say something too, right? Like since yeah. we've met, like I've had commanding massive respect, no pun intended, right? This is the massive agent <laughs> podcast, massive respect for you and what you do. Everyone that knows you views you not only as a thought leader, but just a leader in general and someone that helps inspire and brings people along. You're positive. You're, you know, mm. it's magnetically infectious energy. I love being around you and catching up, man. I feel like we've been friends for years from the moment I met you. Right. Uh, but I really value and appreciate as a lender because lenders and realtors can both learn from similar coaches or similar thought leaders. And I know, it's, you know, you're realtor first uh, and that's typically, you know, the majority of your audience. But I learn a tremendous amount and I appreciate all the value and everything that you put out into the real estate community because real estate includes all of us. So what you do, man, it's it's pioneer esque and it's trailblazing and all of us that are fans of yours and listen to you are moved by it and inspired. So just, I'm sure your listeners know this because they all love you, man, but I'm a huge fan and just keep fucking going, man. Don't stop with this. Wow, man. Thank you. That, that, that means a lot. I, I really appreciate that. Um, yeah. It, it, realtors should be watching great mortgage loan officers and their content too. And get outside the industry and watch other stuff. Like some, some of the best ideas that I come up with for how to do a video or a topic or something I learned from like a fitness coach or something like, totally. you know, yeah. Just yeah. watch other stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Dude. Thank you for that. Uh, My pleasure. We, man. we have to do the rapid fire questions. Let's do it. I will have, I will have angry people blowing up the DM saying, what the fuck? Like we need to know well, we where our June falls on burgers versus pizza. Like this, this is important stuff. So either or questions, okay. feel free to elaborate. If you want to, you don't have to. Um, and then at the end, will let you tell everyone where they can find you and connect with you and learn more about you if they're not already following you, which for God's sakes, they <laughs> need to after this. <laughs> Thanks, man. So, yeah, man. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. Instagram or YouTube? YouTube. Oh, okay. Books or podcasts? Podcast. Podcast or audiobook? That's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to stay yep. with podcast. Right on. Rental property or flipping? Rental property. That's a very, very common answer, I, which is awesome. awesome. I've had my ass burned from flipping, and it's mm -hmm. still hot, man. I'm, I've, I'm still dealing with the scars, so I'm just not getting back into those waters anytime soon. Not alone, at least. And it's yeah. a one-time paycheck, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. If there is one. If there is one, which right. there wasn't in my case. Burgers or pizza? Tough one again, but I'm going to go with burgers and I'll probably go to hell for it because I'm a Hindu and I'm not even supposed to eat beef, but I have been <laughs> since I was a kid. So I like burgers. That's fantastic. Yeah. So are burgers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> New York or LA? New York. Nice. New York or San Francisco? 
San Francisco. Yeah. San Fran's a cool city. And if you guys don't know, Arjun is in San Fran. You're, you're, you're kind of downtown, right? At least you work. Yeah, downtown. I'm right in the heart. I'm in Jackson Square, which is kind of a New York esque neighborhood. Okay. It's uh, the arts. Uh, it's kind of the arts district or arts center. Um, a lot of your designers and architecture firms all around here. So it's a, it's a cool little neighborhood, but I'm just a stone's throw away from downtown in the financial district. Awesome. I was blown away with Salesforce Park. Is that what they oh, call it? Yeah. So amazing. And I'm it's like, incredible. how much did this cost? How much did this land cost? Like billions it's of just, dollars. Yeah. It, no, it's, yeah. There's a lot of interesting and pretty dynamic things that are in this downtown area, man. It's a u very unique and beautiful city when it's, when it's well kept. There's the caveat. Yeah. It, yeah it's right. an amazing city. Yes. Yeah. Uh, baseball or football? Football. Football or Taekwondo? Shh, come on, man. Taekwondo. <laughs> That's so awesome. And two-time world champion in Taekwondo? Yes, sir. How long ago was that? So my first world championships was in 07. And then I took a little bit of a break, came back in 2012, fell short. I didn't, I didn't want to end that way. So I went all in for 2014 and I won there and that's when I retired. Oh, shit. That's awesome. So, wow. That's, there's a movie there, dude. <laughs> It, I There's call it, I mean, it's another topic and we can get into it, but I've actually shared this on a podcast. I called the 2012 moment where I felt short my Rocky three moment mm. because it's my favorite Rocky of all of them. And most people guess Rocky four. They say that's the best one because it was the Russian and it was amazing and the fight was amazing and the movie was a little bit more modern compared to the other ones. They feel really old, but Rocky three was the most impactful because he had the huge setback, right? And we all have this moment where we like fall and sometimes that fall is pretty catastrophic and you have to re put yourself back together again, retool and recalibrate yourself. And I did that. And then it was very satisfying to get back up there and finish on top because of all that work and what it took to get there. So for me, Rocky three is my favorite, but yeah, I've, I've shared that story a few times because I hope it inspires people or moves them that the setback is, you know, going to be the start of your comeback. That can and should be a totally, totally other podcast episode so maybe we'll have you back to dive more into that because there's so many parallels with business success oh, yeah. life Anytime. like everything yep. awesome man so cool uh mountains or beach beach podcast or vlog uh i'm gonna stay with podcast still yeah right i've answered that three times i think yeah i've given that answer yeah youtube or facebook live youtube rich dad poor dad or millionaire real estate agent Oof, rich dad, poor dad still. That's a classic. Yeah, yeah. It is a classic. Uber or Lyft? Uber. Gary V or Grant Cardone? Stay with Gary. Stay with Gary, yep. Yeah, love it, man. Yeah. Dude, where, if anyone who's not yet following you, where can they find you? What's the Our best way for them to connect with you and learn from you? Instagram is where I interface with most everyone else, even though I'm trying to be much more active on other platforms. But in terms of communication, you can hit me on Instagram. It's me that answers all my DMs and replies to every comment. I don't have a bot or anyone else that does it. Uh, and I want to keep that for as long as I can. So it's always me, but reach me at Arjun Mortgage. My first name and then the word mortgage. Find me on there and drop me a DM. Uh, and I love, to, I love chatting with people, connecting with them and, and just collaborating. So let's connect. Hell yeah. And we'll make sure to link to your Instagram in the show notes if you're listening. And then if you're watching on YouTube on the Broke Agent Media channel, it's in the, the description. Make sure you follow Arjun immediately because, uh, you know, he's, he's one of the, the Dingra dynasty. You know, yeah. what, what, what do you guys like? How is this? How are three of the most influential people in the mortgage world who are doing like just, just dominating social media all from the same family? Like, what do you guys eat? Well, what's in your, what's, what was put in your water when you were growing we up? We didn't you know? eat well, man. We grew up on a lot of things that people used to think were good or they were not so unhealthy, but now they're terribly unhealthy for you, which was Cocoa Puffs, right? And Rice Krispies <laughs> and Cocoa Krispies. We were huge cocoa, uh, cocoa cereal addicts. And all the kids in the neighborhood would come to our house because our parents would stock the house with loads of the cereal because they loved it too. And none of the other kids were allowed to have it at home. So everyone came to our place to eat it. But that's what we ate. So we didn't eat anything special or different. I think the thing that's always worked for us because we're all very unique and different. One, Neil led the charge. There's no question. Like that needs to always be stated. Like Shivani and I were the more social extroverts. Neil was super introverted and quiet and kind of on his own. 
did his own thing. He thought social was stupid. He may not ever admit that, but I think if, if he's honest, he thought social media was a waste of time, like dumb for people to do. That's where they just get sucked into and they're completely unproductive. Then he kind of figured out, connected some dots and took off with it because we always knew Neil was the smartest human being most any of us know, and he is without question. He's the smartest guy I know. So he connected those dots really fast. Shivani and I just kind of followed him, but we've stayed in different lanes and we're also really huge fans of one another. And it's easy to do that because people are like, oh, your siblings, aren't you like envious a little bit? Or do you ever get jealous that your brother's so big and does all this? I'm like, no, I'm his biggest fan. I, he's in a different lane than me anyways. So there's no point in trying to compare or be envious. Like I admire and respect and love and we all do it for each other. And I think that's kind of helped continue to inspire us and build us up. Love it, man. I love what you're doing. Keep doing it. Make sure you follow Arjun immediately. And dude, we'll have to have you back because we could talk for hours on this. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you, Dustin. I appreciate you too, man. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Thank you. I am so excited to see who out of you are going to take the action. You guys that show up in the Massive Agent Society in a big way over the next couple of weeks, I know that you guys listened to this episode. You guys took action. You guys made a decision that you're in, that you're going to take 2023 very seriously. And you're not just going to say it. You're going to put your money and your mouth. No, no, no. You're going to put your money and your action where your mouth is. You're going to actually show through your actions what is important to you. And I'm so excited for that. You guys are going to have, man, I, I'm excited for what's about to happen for you in the Massive Agent Society going into this next year because it is leveling up and we're going to drag you with us. Simple as that. If you're there, fantastic. It's going to be a fun ride. If you're not, I'm sorry. You have the chance. There you go. So last reminder for the next, I'm going to go until December 20th. If you use promo code SANTA22 at checkout, SANTA22 at checkout um, off the annual membership, we're going to give you $1,000 off so you can commit for a year, save a shitload of money, like a lot of money. And then you don't need to worry about the monthly payments. Just commit, you're in, show up, do the work. You will grow more than you ever could watching YouTube or trying to figure this shit out yourself or doing the same old thing. What got you here will not get you there. So what are you going to do different going into this next year to have different results in this different market? We will see. We will see. That is my challenge to you. I appreciate the hell out of you for listening. If you guys found this, this episode valuable or any parts of it valuable, please share them with a colleague. Share them with an agent that you're friends with, your broker, team leader, someone in the industry that you share it with your lender partner but uh, don't keep this stuff secret. Help us grow our audience. We'll help you grow your sales. Damn, that's good. Help us grow the audience. We'll help you grow your sales. Yes, I like that. That's the deal. You guys keep showing up. Help us grow the audience. We'll keep helping you grow your sales and your profit. See you guys next week. One hell of an episode coming up. Damn. See you guys soon.